Hey guys, um, I've always hated bullies, and I hate anybody that bullies or gangs up on other people. So uh, I want to tell you a quick story about something I did many years ago to a bully, and uh, I'm actually kind of nervous because uh, <laughs> I'm still scared he's going to come beat me up if he finds out it was me. But anyway, I'm going to tell you anyway, I'll take the risk. He's going to come at my door like 40, I'm going to kick your butt, no, no. Growing up as a kid, I had a Jewish neighbor named Alan. Uh, he was a couple years older than me, and uh, I don't know what it was, but I think Alan may have been, I don't know if he was autistic or what, there was just something different about Alan, but I didn't care, and I didn't judge because I liked everybody. I'll tell you a little bit about Alan. Alan had this odd gift for, uh, like, shooting basketball. I don't know what it was. Like, you know, he could calculate the rim and, like, throw it and swoosh it every time. Like, you know, as long as his feet were flat, no matter where he was in the court, almost it felt like he could shoot it and it would swoosh in. You never wanted to play Alan and cow or horse. Uh, so uh, when we play basketball together, I, w I would always like, Alan, throw me the ball, and I'd run, you know, underneath the net and try to get the guys to me and then throw out to Alan knowing that if I can get him those two seconds, he would shoot it and it would go in. Now, you, you're probably like, oh, why didn't Alan play professional basketball? Well, that's because, you know, if you wanted to mess with Alan, all you do is go like this to him and he would not be able to shoot his magic shot and uh, it wouldn't work out. I always liked Alan. He was always nice to me. And uh, I'll never forget this. Um, I was at school. And I was outside, and it was about, I think it was lunchtime. No, actually, it was in the morning, sorry. It was actually in the morning of school. And everybody was walking in and getting out of the cars and blah, blah, blah. And I remember looking over, and I saw the two big bullies, the two big senior football players of our high school. I was in 10th grade. Alan was, I think, a senior also. And I'll never forget, uh, Alan was carrying his books. And they came up, and they hit all the books out of his hand. And his papers went flying everywhere, and people started laughing. And... I remember seeing it going, oh no, 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 what's going on here? And everyone laughed and the big football players got around and and uh, I didn't know what to do. I was lost. I was just like, you know, what do I do? That's my friend Alan. Why is anybody helping him? Why is anybody doing anything? I, did, I didn't know what to do. My heart was racing and I, I knew if I went in there and said anything, you know, they would just clearly, you know, beat the crap out of me, you know. Uh, I was picturing them like using me like a volleyball, just like hitting me back and forth and just, you know, killing me. Alan was very quiet and picked up his stuff and they'd kick it out and he picked up his stuff and he went about his business and finally, you know, they, they got bored and they left him alone and they went back in the classroom. Well, it always bothered me. It bothered me for like weeks, you know. I'd be home in bed dreaming that I had like Chuck Norris powers to where I, you know, that day when it happened I could have walked in there and, you know, kicked his butt and all the chicks were screaming for me and, you know, that never, never, that never quite happened. Uh, well, one day, uh, my dad was at the dog track, my mom was home in bed, and she had a rental car that she had, uh, cause her car was in the shop, uh, it was always in the shop, uh, I'll tell you that story later, but, uh, her car was always in the shop, and she had a rental car, so, uh, my buddy Howard was over, and I said, Howard, let's go take the, uh, the rental car for a little spin. It was a yellow, uh, Firebird. He was like, all right, let's do it. He goes, are you sure? Are you sure? He goes, you're only 15. I'm like, hey, don't worry about it. We're just going to go around the block. He's like, all right. So we went outside and pushed the car up the street, jumped in, turned it on, and started driving around just throughout the neighborhood or whatnot. Well, anyway, the bully, not going to say his name because <laughs> I'm scared, uh, the bully uh, lived in my neighborhood. So anyway, Howard didn't know this, but I had kind of a plan in my head. I was like, I'm going to get this guy back for, for Alan, right? So I drove the rental car, knowing it was a rental car, to the bully's house. I backed the rental car up all the way to his house. Now I remember Howard was like, dude, what are you doing? This is this is so-and-so's house. What are you crazy? I'm like, calm down, don't worry about it. He's not gonna know. Calm down. He's like, are you crazy? He was all nervous. And I'm back in the car, but I remember I hit the brakes, right? And the entire front of the house lit up in red, right? That's how close I was to the house. Well, Howard goes, oh my God, oh my God. He's, and he points over to the, and I'm driving the car and he points over to my left. And I go, what? And I look over and there he is. The bully, with all of his muscles, you know, with a giant rock going like this, going, looking in the window like this, right? And I was like, oh my God, I looked over at him, and I was like, oh my God. I threw it in drive, and I just hit the gas. Now, I'll never forget, the speedometer went, whoop, it went to 85, and it buried the speedometer. The grass was wet, it's Florida. The bully throws his rock, hits the side of the car, boom! I'm like, the, the, the thing's going 85 miles an hour, the car's going, Rrr! I couldn't get control of the car, it's spinning in circle, doing all this crazy stuff. I hit the street and I must have left a 100 foot skid mark 
out of that house. And I didn't plan on being this big of a deal. I just was, holy crap, there he is, the bully, he's going to kill us both. Hit the gas and this is what happened. Well, anyway, I quickly race home, get in the driveway, I throw it in park. I actually pulled the car all the way up towards the back of the lake where my parents live so nobody would see it. Howard jumps out of the car and goes, oh my god, we're dead, we're dead, we're dead. I'm like, don't worry, calm down inside. I'm like, oh my god, he's right, we're dead. He goes, I can't believe it. I go, you can't tell anybody. Howard, you can't tell anybody. I can't. He goes, all right, I'm not telling anybody. What are you kidding me? I'm not telling anybody. We'll get killed. I'm like, thank God. All right, fine. So later on that night, I'm up. I can't sleep. I am scared to death. My dad, God rest his soul, thank you all for all the very kind messages. Uh, he will be missed greatly. My dad, who's always been my hero, he, I said, Dad, he walks in the door. I said, Dad, and I was I was actually crying. I remember I was crying. <laughs> Like, Dad, Dad, I, Dad I, I screwed up. It was like 12 o'clock at night. Like Mike said, Mom's still in bed. Dad, I screwed up. I gave the big bully a, a lawn job with the rental car. He threw a rock. He hit the side of the car. I'm so sorry, Dad. I'm so sorry. I was trying to get him back for Alan because blah, 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 blah. And my dad was like, you know, looking at me. He's like, all right, calm down. We're going to take care of this. I told my dad, I said, look, the bully's going to drive around. He's going to find out who's got this yellow car, and he's going to beat the crap out of me. So once again, Dad was like, don't worry. Take it to the well, you know, take it to the Albertsons parking lot, leave it there, and we'll figure this out. I'm like, great. So we take it to the Albertsons parking lot. Now I'm still worried because I know I've got to go to school, and I'm pretty sure the bully saw who I was. So I am like shaking like a leaf. I'm on the inside, like, oh my god, what am I gonna do? This guy's gonna beat the crap out of me in front of everybody, right? Alan doesn't know. Nobody knows anything, right? I'm not telling anybody except my father. So uh, I get there and I get to school and I see him. The bully is walking up to people and he's grabbing like guys and he's saying, blah, 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 and he's screaming at him, right? Blah, 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 blah. And he walks over to my buddy, uh, I think it was Jason at the time, and he's, blah, 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 he says whatever he's said to Jason. And, and he walks off and he's looking around and I said, uh, hey, uh, Jason. He says, yeah, yeah. I said, what did, uh, what did so and so say? And he said, uh, do I know anybody with a white firebird? And I started thinking to myself, a white firebird? Now, here's the great thing. In Florida, there's a lot of rain, there's a lot of mold. The light things, because of the mold, end up emitting like a yellowish light. Now, here's what I didn't know. When you put a yellow light on a yellow car, you know what color it turns out? White. So the big bully was asking anybody who knew anything about a white firebird. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, I couldn't believe it. Because the firebird was yellow. People knew I had a, uh, uh, you know, my mom had a yellow firebird for a couple weeks. But nobody knew it was a white one, right? So, thank the heavens, to this day, the bully doesn't know. Alan didn't even get to know. I didn't tell anybody. But everybody was like, oh my God, did you see the lawn job that so-and-so got? I remember like thinking, oh my God, I wanted to take credit for it so bad, but I was too scared. I'm like, yeah, that guy was awesome, right? right? I mean, you should have seen it. It looked like the Grand Canyon in his, uh, in his uh, uh, front lawn. I mean, I didn't plan it to be that great, but it turned out to be great. Anyway, you're probably wondering, why are you telling this, this big story, Chad? I saw a vlog of somebody who really moved me. His name was uh, Jonah. Jonah Mori. His YouTube channel is blah, 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 2145. And he's a 14-year-old boy who uh, is gay, and I guess he's been picked on a lot. And he was crying to camera, holding up the cards. I'll put a link in the description so you can go see his video and say hi. When I first saw his video, he only had like 5,000 views. Now, here's the, here's the great thing, okay? I was going to tell you guys to go comment and tell them good things and positive things because once again I'm rooting for the underdogs. But here is the great news and here is what I love about YouTube and our world. Um, I went to his channel this morning. Uh, I commented like I said when he only had 5,000 comments and I go there now. He's got 3.7 million views. So anyway, Jonah, congratulations. Like I left in my comment, it's people like you who think different that help change the world. And I think this little video you made turned out to be a wonderful thing. So anyway, guys, if you have a, a funny story or something, or if you got a story of being bullied, leave in the comments below. You guys know I read them all. Uh, thank you for all of the kind messages about my dad. He will be missed tremendously. Uh, if you guys didn't see that video, I'll also put a link in there. My dad recently died. I uh, really, really appreciate it. And I guess don't be a bully. I'll see you guys soon. Thank you, Jonah, for inspiring me to even vlog again. I haven't vlogged in a while, and uh, you're the reason I'm doing this. So congrats, pal. We'll see you guys soon. All right, bye.